Hi there and welcome to Friday's Swim Smooth blog here at feelforthewater.com. I'm really excited to share this next video clip with you today because it, this is a video which has really been five years in the making and also the story has been developing a lot over the last five years too. If you're an overglider or have some interest in what we're doing in terms of improving your efficiency in the water, this one's going to really appeal to you because when Scott first came to see us five years ago, he was very much under the impression that to be more efficient with his swimming, he needed to take fewer strokes per 50 meters. Now at that time, five years ago, that was still very much everyone's belief. To be more efficient, take fewer strokes per lap. And why wouldn't you think this when you look at the, some of the world's best swimmers in the pool taking around about 30 or 32 strokes to, take, uh, to complete each 50 meters? What's interesting about Scott's story is we've been uh, utilizing this story over the last five years as an indication for how somebody might get sort of ingrained in that idea of to be more efficient, you have to take fewer strokes. Scott started five years ago by suggesting that he could do 28 strokes per 50 and that surely that must be efficient when compared to some of the elites out there. What Scott failed to realize at that point in time was the necessity to consider the stroke rate that he's holding, so the other side of the equation. In the video clip, in the before video footage, Scott is swimming at 33 strokes per minute, which is incredibly slow. In fact, it's well worth watching the end of the video analysis that I'll conduct for you just now, because at the end of the after video footage, what we do is we actually take Scott through and put him back at 33 strokes per minute and see how he feels doing that. And it's truly incredible. He literally says it's impossible for him to swim that slow now and how fatiguing he felt swimming at such a slow stroke rate. So let's get stuck into this video footage. And uh, what's really quite interesting is, again, I've been telling this story over the years. Scott allows to share it with people and it's really helped a lot of overgliders around the world. But what's so interesting about this was I had a little bit of an eye on experience on this one because I've been telling people that Scott is around about six foot two, similar sort of height to John Van Hazel. It was only when we stand up and compare ourselves in this after video footage that I realized he's exactly the same height as me. What's different though, is that Scott's wingspan is at least six inches or 15 centimeters longer than mine. His hands are absolutely massive compared to mine. So it's always gonna be a case that it's gonna be horses for courses. Scott is always going to benefit from a longer freestyle swim stroke than myself, who tends to turn over at a much higher stroke rate of around about 80 strokes per minute when I'm racing. But it's very much like I say, a horses for courses affair. And even somebody of his stature with very broad shoulders, long arms and big hands, 33 strokes per minute just isn't effective at all. And we'll see that in the before and after video footage. So let's take a little look at this. Um, you'll see his improvement over the course of this being in the ballpark of 15 to 16 seconds per length. That's per 50 meters or 30 to 32 seconds per 100 meters. And he almost doubles his stroke rate in the process. Scott went away and he says it took him about two years to get out of the habit of stopping and starting. And for me, delivering this particular session, I felt Scott went away a little bit despondent because at the end of the uh, initial video footage, he goes away after we've done some stroke correction and he feels despondent because he's taking three or four more strokes to complete each length. I told him at that point that, that don't worry about that because his stroke rate has come up, his times have come down and he's feeling easier. But it was so ingrained in the psyche that to be more efficient, he needs to take fewer strokes. So if any of this is ringing a bell with you, if you feel, still feel the need to hang on to the longest possible stroke that you can do, you need to check out this video analysis. It's around about half an hour, well worth sitting down with a coffee and watching through on this. And if you want to follow the same process to improve your swimming, if you recognize yourself in Scott, if you recognize yourself in that mentality, check out the process at app.swimsmooth.com and you can follow the same process that Scott's gone through. Hopefully it won't take you five years to get to the same sort of level, but like I mentioned, Scott had gone away for that period of time. I hadn't heard back from him. I assumed that maybe that despondency had just had just sort of continued to progress and, uh, and he hadn't moved forwards, but you're gonna be really impressed when you see the video footage as I was, and it's a pleasure to be able to share this with you today. So here we go. Okay, mate, five years on then. <laughs> Let's take a little look at your video footage here of um, how that stroke and the rhythm is progressing. And I'm pleased to say it's progressing nicely. Is it? yeah. uh, I happen to have, of course, the yeah. uh, original footage, um, which we'll use just here to drop things in, in place. Yeah, that should be interesting. Can I pop in and have a little look? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I hope so. uh, 
Here we go. Scott, this is uh, Sally, our coach Hi, over here. So Sally's um, started coaching with us since, uh, okay, your, yeah. since your session, um, back five years ago here. And yeah, if you don't mind, uh, Sally just dropping in here. I have seen here. you on video before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're famous. <laughs> okay. No pressure. No pressure now. Yeah, exactly. So if we look at this, uh, this is the original video footage from up at Challenge Stadium. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Let's, <laughs> let's have a little look at it. Now, we'll just get a uh, couple of little metrics here just to start the day off. So we'll watch this first lap. And if you recall, one of the things that we discussed was you came for me, came to this first session because you're a little bit concerned that you weren't getting any faster. In fact, you felt like you're platting off and maybe even slowing down a little bit. Okay. One of the discussions that we had was about the length of the stroke and how at that point in your head, it was all about make it longer, get more efficient. Less strokes. Exactly, right. less strokes <laughs> per 50 meters. And uh, I think you claimed that you, you know, you're doing around, able to do around about 28 on the 50. Now, on this first video clip on the left here, yep. if we just play it here, and we'll actually look at the uh, the speed that you're actually swimming at and also the um, the stroke rate. So let's just have a little look here. Okay. Oops. Something like in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> Blood. That's amazing. That's so slow. So I refuse to watch. Does it? Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Does it? Does it look a lot, um, a lot slower than what it feels currently, in terms of the rhythm, especially? Say that, that again. So does it? Looking at this now, five yeah. years on, does that yeah. look slow to you? Oh, massively yeah, slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Incredibly slow. And one of the, uh, there's a couple of major things that have improved that we're going to look at here. It's not just the timing that's improved. That arm's you, like that. Exactly right. <laughs> arm's just held up like that, sort of uh, just patiently waiting for the other ones to sort of catch it up, basically. Mm. But look at the body position as well. Even though you've done quite a bit of work on improving the body position, because the stroke rate is so slow here, you just end up sinking at the back. Yes. Now your body position is yes. up a lot, lot higher than this in the water there. So this lap here is just taking you 66, 67 seconds to complete. But if you recall, one of the things that was actually holding you up, you said that after the session you'd gone away and you did a PB straight away just from working on things. Yeah. But you notice even on, on your comments on that, you were saying you still needed to take a, a stop and a, a rest yeah. at the end awesome. of each 100 meters. And if we have a look now at this uh, video clip here to the right hand side, so this is today. So I clocked you there 33, 35, 33 to 35 strokes per minute and 67, uh, sorry, 66, 67 seconds for the 50 meters. Right. Okay. Now, if we watch what happens here. Now, on the, oops, what's going on here? I think we just crashed. Let's just do that again. It didn't, feel, it like. didn't feel like a good swim for me this morning either, but that's just the intense. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, <clears throat> you know the last lap that we did just after we've um, sink downs, yeah. after we've done the sink downs just to relax up a little bit. That was uh, that was fifty two seconds was that lap. So that in itself is fifteen seconds per fifty meters quicker yeah. than five years ago, which is thirty seconds a hundred meters, uh, which is quite significant, of course. Now, yeah. if we just watch this here, then so you set off on the clock here at four seconds on the uh, on our little dial down there, and we end up getting to the end of the pool. Let's just time this. So your first length there is done in around about 50 seconds. Okay. So compared to your first length five years ago, there we go. Yeah, 51 seconds. Okay, so the difference is 16 seconds per 50 meters <laughs> okay. or 32 seconds per 100. Yeah. So that's really good, Scott. Now let's, let's investigate why it's so much better. Okay. Now, one of the... If we start off with the fundamentals, one of the one of the biggest improvements, which seems to most people, you know, one of the one of the uh, most simple things, is that here on this video clip, you're exhaling underneath the water. Yeah. Okay. I should be now, focusing on it in the last few weeks. You have a view. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And you know, I haven't. Um, if we just have a little look at the, the final lap here, watch. They're coming down. Whoops. Here we go. Yeah, so when they face them, you can actually see, like, if we just zoom in here. Camera's great, isn't it? Camera's, yeah, it's a lot yeah. better than last time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've got Sally to thank for that. We've, uh, this is my eighth camera. <laughs> eight, yeah, they, they keep keep failing, unfortunately, on us. But, yeah, Sally came to the rescue with her HD camera 
for loan for this session here. So if you look at this here, look, you look like Father Christmas. You've got Father Christmas bubble beard there, basically, yeah. underneath the water. Again, if we drop in the original video footage, just side by side, and we look at you swimming down the lap here. Yeah. Oops. Where are we? Hands here we go. Like that. Yeah, ex exactly right, yeah. So looking at this here, look, you're only breathing out right at the very last moment. Yeah, okay. And in fact, if we actually time this, if you want to get a little bit funky with this, this software here allows us to be accurate to one one thousandth of a second. So you actually start exhaling just there on that frame, 0 .11, uh, 0 0.166 on the uh, timer, and then your mouth is out of the water just there, yep. literally around about half of a second later. So what you're actually doing, if we go back to the original side on shot, just here, is by holding onto your breath, even though you've got your head very clearly submerged, pushing the head and chest down in the water, it doesn't really matter if you've got a lung full of air, because that lung full of air is lifting you up here and yeah. ultimately sinking the legs down at the back. Okay. So one of the big improvements, if we watch you from the side and just zoom out here, oops, and look at you from here, when you're swimming along on the, uh, on the after shot, the body position stays up much more horizontally, and you've got a much more rhythmical leg kick. If we go to your video clip here, look, and get rid of some of these lines. It's like a kick. Yeah, exactly right. We we <coughs> since named it, believe it, but or not, the Overglider Kick Start. <laughs> so watch what happens. So this is the original video footage here, look. Oh, okay, yeah. Now see how the kick yeah. itself is very sporadic. Yep. And what's, what it's actually doing, look, is you tended to pause there with that left arm where that hand drifted up mm -hmm. towards the surface. Yeah. It stalls at that point, and so you actually get you started again. What you end up doing is you end up bringing this funny... Try. To try and push yourself through that point. Exactly right, yeah. Now, this became, since this session five years ago, it became a phenomenon which I started to look at for a lot with, uh, with overgliders all around the world. Yeah. And if we look at this uh, gentleman here, just side by side with yourself, um, we actually call it kick, kick start. Here we go, check this guy out here. So he was doing very, very much the same sort of thing that you were trying to do gliding out in front of his head and you can, his kickstart is very very obvious indeed you yeah. can see how he literally comes to a stall yeah. and then a big bend of the knee Massive bend, yeah. absolutely now what both you and he were trying to do you're both you're both trying to develop a two beat leg kick mm -hmm. okay a very steady kick so it's not taking up too much energy the difference is though a good two beat leg kick looks very different to what both of you are doing both of you when you kick the emphasis tends to be on kicking down yeah just to get you started again at the front. Right. And same with Chris here, look. It's like a flick of the knee, yeah. pushing down. But of course, you can really appreciate when he does that with his knee. Yeah, it's sort of quite bad, that dude. Exactly yeah. right. So the knee is actually creating a lot of drag in that scenario. He's, the timing's not too bad. You know, he's actually you know trying to get that, uh, get that ex, um, just turn this off here on the, he's trying to get the, um, the timing correct. But unfortunately, by dropping the knee as much as what he's doing, and with yourself as well, mm -hmm. it's creating additional drag. Absolutely. Now, a really effective two-beat leg kick looks very, very different to this. And interestingly enough, it's a very, very different type of swimmer here that we see doing this. Now, this here is... Uh, you saw it? Yeah, okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. So this is Shelley Taylor-Smith, seven times world marathon swimming champion. Yeah. The major, major difference between you and her and her and Chris here is in the rhythm of the stroke. Shelly is what we call a swinger. In fact, yep. she's a quintessential swinger. Ironically enough, she didn't want us to film her because all for her entire adult life and uh, you know junior life as a swimmer, everyone used to say, oh, Shelly Taylor Smith, she's got a horrible stroke. It looks like she's just like, right, oh, really? you know, yeah. sort of smashing her arms, yeah. swinging over the top of the water. But this is what made her really effective in rough, choppy open water. Absolutely. She would swim from Sydney to Wollongong at an average stroke rate of 88 strokes per minute, wow. not the 33 or 35 strokes per minute we can see here. Okay. Now, when she pushes off the wall, she pushes off with a six beat leg kick, but then watch what happens. She settles into this brilliant I'm two like, beat kick rhythm. Yeah, yeah it's, it's beautiful. Great. Yeah, it's yeah. really, really good. Now, in that video clip here, and certainly with Chris, it's easy to look at a, a kick like that and think, well, this is fantastic. It's obviously very economical. If the world's best ever marathon swimmer, both male and female, is doing this two big kick, we want yeah. to try and copy it. Yeah. The difference, though, like I was saying, though, is in the rhythm of the stroke. 
Shelley Taylor Smith stroke rate is much, much higher. The problem with having a stroke rate which is matched, so a low stroke rate trying to match with a two beat leg kick, is that you end up stalling. Yeah. And then the kick <laughs> itself becomes more of a, a push to kick start yourself rather than it becoming just a just almost part of the motion, part of the rhythm of a stroke. Yeah. And the key the difference, yeah. exactly yeah. right. And notice how her emphasis seems to be on lifting the leg up, yeah. not kicking down. Yep. Now, there's a really good, within the uh, app that I'm going to set you up with, there's a really good two-beat uh, leg kick video. I don't know if you've actually come across it yet. Just type in the search function, just type in two-beat kick. Yep. And it's a 25-minute video clip, which I'm doing with one of my other coaches, taking you through how to actually develop that two-beat kick. And it's, it's quite an interesting process to actually go through. But one of the key things we talk about right at the start of that two-beat clip is that a two-beat leg kick is not necessarily for everybody. No. And one of the best improvements that you've made to your kick, let's just get rid of Chris here, is that you've actually developed a six-beat flutter leg kick oh. since the last session. Yes, absolutely. Oh, so no. let's just have a look at this. Yeah, yeah. Now, you may or may not have been aware of that. No. Now, six beat sounds crazy and it sounds hard, etc. But really, a six beat kick is just more of a consistent rhythm. It's just like a tap, tap, tapping away. You don't need to kick hard uh, whilst you're doing it. And if we watch you underneath the water, we'll see rather than the stop start that we saw before, it's just a much more consistent rhythm. Now, swimmers with long strokes and slow stroke rates are actually better suited to having this style of kick than what you were doing in the, in the clip here. Okay. Because you've got absolutely no rhythm to the kick on this one here. Yeah. It's just a stop, start, stop, start. And that gets yeah. very, very fatiguing indeed, okay. especially when you bend a lot from the knee to achieve that. So if you watch that there, look, it's a great, it's almost like a, it's a wind up mm. and then a stall. Yeah. Wind up and, and then a stall. Yeah. And the reason this was happening in this original video clip comes all the way back to the actual rhythm and timing of the stroke. So let's just focus on that. And again, if we're sort of saying so far, you're already swimming better because your body position's up. You're swimming better because the leg kick is more suited to your stroke type, and you are a tall guy with a long arm reach. How, how tall exactly are you? I don't know, about five eleven, I think. No, you're taller than that. Yeah. Got to be, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I, I, I've been telling everyone you're six foot two. <laughs> <laughs> he's taller than me, isn't he? Or? No. no, really? Oh wow, goodness me! Just yeah. go, back start, to, go back just to go, that. Go, go, What's something oh, new no, here? No, you're pretty much the same. Not the same. Your okay. Just sticking up a bit more. What's going to be interesting though is if we actually look at the length of your arms oh, compared yeah, to yeah. So you can see without even doing anything, you can see that you're a lot broader than I am. So what I'll get you to do. And yeah, your arms yeah. are longer, I think. If you stretch, that's yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah sorry. So if you stretch down the pole and stretch up as high as you can, there, Scott. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you just move away, Sal, do you want to do reach up there? So we've got that's different from your arm length. The difference in our yeah, the difference in our oh, arm wow, length. Wow, look at that. Yeah, yeah. So you've got you've got a massive you've got an ape index there of about plus six inches. Plus six. I don't know if I've, I've got an ape index of about that. plus half an inch. Monkey arms is my So even though we're exactly <laughs> the same height, you know, I've been looking at this video for the last five years, yeah. assuming that you were six foot two, but in actual fact, you're the same height as me. <laughs> but that's, that's, it, that's, it, that's an even better example of, you know, why it's important to have horses for courses and the, the right type of strength yeah. to suit each person. Yeah. So you're always going to, you're always going to benefit, Scott, from a longer stroke than I would benefit from yeah. because you, you've made differently. If you look at the size of your hands as well, no difference there, like much, much bigger in terms of the actual hold that you can have per stroke. But what I want to focus on is not the difference between me and you, it's the difference between you then and you now. So this is a, a lovely little um, picture here over the top of the water. If we just uh, get you a little bit more into the frame. Here we go. Now then, if we look at this, first and yeah. foremost, you can see that from this position, you're in exactly the same position though. So you're at maximum extension there on the left. Yeah. You're at maximum extension here with that left arm. First and foremost, what you can see is that the body rotation here is much greater yeah. than what it is here. Yeah. Now, in the past, people were taught to rotate to 90 degrees. Swim on your side like a fish was the, was the phrase in the early 90s that most mm. people try to adhere to. But when the body over rotates to 90 degrees, and I'll show you with a comparison with Rebecca Adlington, who's a swimmer that I took for a session, uh, or took, took for filming, double Olympic gold medalist Rebecca Adlington. Yep. She's got a beautiful smooth freestyle stroke, but she's only rotating to about 45 to 60 degrees, not 90. So here, you've got less rotation. 
in the past you might have thought that was a bad thing, but I'm actually saying here it's actually a good thing. Yep. The key difference though from this angle is what happens in terms of the timing. We talked a little bit last time, if you remember, about front quadrant yes. freestyle swimming. Yes. So the idea being that there should always be one hand forwards in front of this yellow line. Yeah. Now, your front quadrant timing on the left here, this is the floor video footage, mm. is so pronounced yeah. that the oh, two hands... Those things I tried to change. Absolutely. Yeah. I, mean, I would imagine it's quite difficult to change it, wasn't it? It took a couple of years. Yeah. A couple of years, yeah, <laughs> yeah right, right, goodness. Much, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's sort of very much an ingrained habit, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Now, if you look at it here, look, the two hands literally come together mm. and join each other at the front. It's like a drill. It's like a drill, exactly yeah. right. It's like the catch-up drill, basically. Mm. The danger here, though, is that at that specific point in time, you haven't got any propulsion happening at all. And because water is 800 times more dense than air, if you're stalling, you're simply decelerating. And that explains the difference of 16 seconds per 50 meters between these two video clips, is that you stall here a lot longer than you stall there. Yeah. Now, five years ago, you might have been under the impression, well, if I need to turn my arms over quicker, then surely that's gonna be harder work. But the thing is, when you're stopping and starting, it actually takes a lot more energy to stop and start yourself than it does if you're keeping the rhythm and momentum going. So here, in this video clip, look, you've still got a very long, sorry, Ben. Yeah, exactly sorry, right, sorry, the, the drag from the leg. So that, that comes back to the, the kickstart that we've just been talking about, look. You're stalling here, so you actually reach, in fact, let's time this watch. Let's bring our little funky stopwatch in here, and we'll zoom right the way in, so you can see that a little bit more clearly. You reach full extension around about here at 0.622. And then we're going to time when this left arm actually then starts to move again. Still, you see how it's still, mm. so that's a full second has passed now. And it hasn't done anything. Right. It just starts to pull through now. Yeah. One and a half seconds was the delay at the front end of the stroke. So all that you've improved really, and it sounds such a simple improvement to make, but like you say, it wasn't easy because right. it took you two years to actually do it yeah. because it was so ingrained in there. And it was also the philosophy behind it as well. Yeah. When this arm here, if we time it now, that's reached full extension just there. Not very clear on that. Let's just move it over the lane rope so we can see it a bit more clearly. There we go. 0 0.901, let's zoom you in. So again, if we look at when, that left arm actually starts to move through the water. So if that's full extension 0.901, that arm is actually starting to move through backwards now. Mm. Okay, so you've got a stall there mm. around about 0.2 seconds, right, okay. which is a heck of a lot better than 1.5 seconds. Better, yeah. Much, much better. You've still got a very long stroke. Yeah. There's two, the two arms look like, you know, compared to a lot of people, I'd still suggest that this is still a bit of an overglide there. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. because, you know, potentially that left arm would start to pull through just a yeah. fraction sooner. But what was interesting on your right hand side, and was actually the case on this arm look as well, is that timing on your right hand side five years ago was always better. That right arm never stayed out in front of your head as long as the left look. Yeah. That's already starting to move through. The problem straight is, arm. it's straight arm and it's very, very wide as well, which will be shifting the hips off in this direction. Mm. This right arm now doesn't go anywhere near as wide look. Look at the mm. difference, way, way better. The elbow is actually bending. Yeah. And by bending the elbow, that actually helps you to get your stroke rate up without you simply thinking, I've got to turn my arms over quicker. Because yeah. there's no good, in this video clip here, and this is why you know I, I sort of went away from this session thinking, I don't know if Scott really enjoyed that session, because obviously, ultimately, you, you were swimming <laughs> faster at the end, but yeah. Yeah, a bit of a wake-up sort of thing. Yeah. But you went away from the session, and even though you were swimming faster at the end of it, you were taking more strokes, yeah. and that might have been counterintuitive to what you'd been learning at, the, yeah. at that well, particular time. Totally let go of that philosophy from that day. Okay. So, yeah, because I realised I've gone down the yeah, wrong Sally's just giving me a thumbs up there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. So this here. Yeah, change. Then, absolutely, absolutely. So what we're going to look at now is what's actually happening fundamentally underneath the water to actually elicit those uh, mm. that sort of change. So quite clearly, you can see this left arm look pulling through sooner. Yeah. Yeah. If we want to, let's just get rid of the old video footage for a second and compare you now to what an elite swimmer would look like from that angle. So I'm going to show you two elite swimmers. My favourite at the moment, well, at the moment, forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca Edlington, the swimmer du jour, exactly right. Um, Rebecca Edlington. Now, we filmed this since your original video footage. Mm -hmm. We're very privileged to get access to be able to film Rebecca. And it was a, it was an, uh, it's been an absolute highlight of my coaching career as being able to just film her. And we didn't coach her, of course. We just wanted to look at her stroke. Yeah. 
Now, Rebecca Adlington is the quintessential smooth. Even in the way that she dives, jumps into the water, smooths always hop into the water like that and then do a little <laughs> bounce forwards, yeah. Now, watch this. This is beautiful. It's long and it's smooth. She's mm. taken around about 18 or 19 strokes to complete each 25, which is actually a shorter stroke than you had in your original video footage. Okay. The stroke rate there, it doesn't look fast, but it's 68 strokes per minute. Is it? Okay. Okay. Now, when we watch her from the top, looking straight down, this is a great view to look at, though. She's got a long stroke, yeah. you know, especially, you know, she's about she's about 5'10 as well, actually. I've got a, uh, one of my favorite pictures is in Pride of Place, and there's a photograph of me stood by, stood beside her. If you watch here, look, it's a long stroke, and it's still very much front quadrant, as in one hand is forward in front of that yellow line. Yeah. But the two hands never catch each other at night. When she was racing, she would race at 86 strokes per minute, which yep. is close to what Shelley was doing. Shelley's a swinger, Rebecca's a smooth, right. but they both tended to have a very similar stroke rate, and obviously Shelley would go for much longer distances. Mm -hmm. But look at that, there's never a danger of the two hands catching up. Right. And underneath the water, what that allows her to then do is it allows her to get this excellent catch and pull through, which is what we're gonna continue to work on a little bit with your stroke in a second when we get back into the water. Yep. So she's got this great pull through look, nice bend at the elbow, from hand the under shoulder. hand under the shoulder, exactly right. Good observation. Mm -hmm. And if you watch her here, look, when she takes that breath in, the elbow stays high because what she's doing, she's tipping her fingertips down. Yeah. And if we just very quickly shoot back to the original and what you were doing here, and you're swimming towards the camera. So what's actually happening? Remember, it's the left arm which was tending to stall. Yeah. And when coaches talk about this importance of having a high elbow, if we just take, here we go, look. Coaches would potentially describe your stroke here as having a dropped elbow. Mm. The point I'm gonna raise for you, and this is open to discussion, is do you have a dropped elbow or do you have a high hand? So what's actually happening there, Scott, is you're actually reaching in and stretching up towards the surface and it's giving the impression that the elbow is very low. Mm. And of course, the elbow is dropped but when you look at it from the perspective of Rebecca Adlington here, though, mm. your hand is actually a lot closer to the surface than hers is. Yeah. She knows that by tipping the fingertips down and getting this purchase on the water, she's actually right now pressing water back behind her. Mm. Of course, your left arm there is actually stalled for a second and a half, holding on to the breath as well. And like I was saying before, even though you've got your eyes looking down, mm. that's not going to help to get your bum, bum and legs high yep. because it's just sort of one's counterbalancing the, uh, counterbalancing so the other the shoulder there. as well. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Try to, just, yeah, trying to rotate it over a bit so your hands more totally. So your fingertips are low. This is the Dave Scott, who's um, six-time yeah. Ironman champion over in, in in the US, he has this idea, and this works perfectly in that uh, in that uh, scenario. He has this teaching um, which he says to people, and it relates totally to this. He says, mm -hmm. "Imagine you've got an eyeball in the crease of your elbow. Your eyeball is looking." up to the surface of the water, and it's allowed to do this because that arm is stalling so long, yeah. waiting patiently out in front of you. Rebecca's elbow, especially when she starts to engage it, like you've just shown me there, it's more looking down, or at least sideways across the pool. Now, depending on people's flexibility, that will determine exactly where this eye eyeball actually looks, but the yeah. last place we want it looking <laughs> is straight up towards straight the up. surface, because otherwise the elbow's dropping them, sort of pulling through with that, you know, with the arm sort of pulling through there. What's also interesting as well is when you look at her, the way she's pulling through and the, the shape of her hand, mm. she looks like she's got more tone to her hand than you have. Your hand in this original video footage is it's it's just loose, yeah. floppy yeah. and relaxed. Now again, the good news is that it doesn't look like that anymore. It looks a significantly better than this, Scott. So if we drop you in, side by side, this is UV Rebecca Adlington, watch <laughs> on that first lap. Here we go, look. The shape and tone of the hand, that, look at that. So much better, mate. So it's an interesting one because freestyle it's swimming. Like yeah, exactly <laughs> right. I, I, I'm sure it has, yeah, exactly right. But it's an interesting one because, you know, freestyle, again, back to the early 90s, people would sort of say, you know, make sure you're actually really relaxed. It needs to be efficient, it needs to be mm. smooth, which is totally correct. Yeah. But if the stroke itself loses tone, then you never actually get a proper purchase on the water. So right. it's, okay, it's okay to be nice and relaxed on the recovery over the top of the water, but as you pierce into the water, and as you, especially as you start to engage, you want a hand position more like what you've got here now, 
than you had on that original video footage. Now that's the right hand, let's look at the left one. The left one is, you know, it's not not, not necessarily quite as nice as the right. as the other side, but it's better than it was. Mm. And most importantly, it doesn't wait there. Look at that hand, it's mm. actually pulling through. In the other video clip, these two hands actually join each other up before you actually start to commence that catch and pull through. So, so far we're ticking a lot of boxes here, Okay. Okay. which, yep. is, which is nice. The other shot that I just wanted to show you of somebody who, again, another elite swimmer, John O. Van Hazel, who's the guy that we used to animate Mr. Smooth from. Yeah, I've watched him a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect. <laughs> now, it's interesting because like his, stroke. His, his stroke is beautiful. Yeah. And in terms of trying to replicate a stroke yeah. properly, for your height, for your build, etc., this guy is, 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 is good. But the difference here, again, talking about front quadrant look, he's got a beautifully long freestyle swim stroke. There's a video clip that we've got up on YouTube which has become quite popular um, where we're actually counting his strokes per length, mm. his stroke rate and the speed that he's swimming at mm. and also the time between the strokes. Okay. And the time between the strokes is about 0.2 of a second, right. not 1.5 like we saw in the original footage, yeah. video footage, but now it's down to about 0 0.25, 0 0.3. Wow. Watch this look at the front. It's a long stroke, but the two hands never yeah. ever catch each other up. Right. That's and that's catch, exactly yeah. right. And the thing with that <laughs> is, the primary difference between a smooth and an overglider is all about how long this arm rests and waits out in front of yeah. the head. Yeah. So now you're starting to look a mo lot more like a smooth than an overglider. But it's still a I, think, yeah, I started but... thinking more like, tried to think more like a swinger. To, Did you? <laughs> to lose that glide, overgliding mentality. Interesting. To pick up that rhythm. Yes. So I started think, tried to think like a swinger and end up Bits. Yeah, exactly right. And like I say, the, never be a swinger, well, no, the, no, exactly right. The <laughs> swinger style wouldn't necessarily suit you. Exactly mm. right. But the smooth style would. Yeah. Exactly right. And getting that rhythm right. So smooths, generally speaking, always have. In fact, look, I'll show you some stats. Smooths always have longer strokes than swingers, usually because of their body type and build. You know, longer arms, etc. So I'd describe myself as a swinger. Um, Especially at the weekend, just joking. Uh, <laughs> each, to uh, each to their own, yeah, yeah. Um, but if you look at the comparison here, look, smooths on the left, swingers on the right. This is stroke counts here. So John and Van Hazel, 32. Um, Ian Thorpe, 32. Michael Phelps, 28. Sun Yang, 27, etc. Swingers, much higher. Yeah, yeah well, there you go, there you go. But this is, this is looking at the, the balance between the two, look. The stroke counts here of swingers is much higher. Yeah. In the past, over 40 was considered inefficient, mm. and yet these are world champions, Olympic gold medalists, world record holders, yeah. with stroke rates much higher than, uh, sorry, stroke counts much higher than that. The difference is, of course, they've got a much higher stroke rate, mm. and given their height and build, etc. Alistair Brownlee, a current Olympic champion in triathlon, for example, he's, he's taller than you are, but he's a lot skinnier, like a lot skinnier. He's not as broad in the shoulders, his hands are smaller, his arm reach isn't as long as yours. He needs to match it with having that higher yeah. tempo. When you see him swimming, just watch this here, look. He doesn't look anywhere near as smooth as Jono, but then he doesn't need to be. He's swimming in a different environment. This yeah. is him on the front. He actually looks quite scrappy. Some people might uh, describe it as. Punchy. Very punchy, yeah. yeah. 95 strokes per minute. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Very effective, and interestingly enough, the top three guys in that particular race are all swimming with exactly the same style. That's his brother, Jonathan Brownlee, Olympic bronze medalist, and this is Harry Wiltshire in the background. Yeah, yeah, so the sort of swinging style of recovery there. So that style is not necessarily going to suit you. It's not where I want you to sort of move towards. No. But continuing down our path of, of improving like you're doing here is, is really, good, uh, really good stuff, you know. Okay. So Very just good. have a little bit of a summary then and show you what we need to do to you know, continue that development even further. What I want, to, what I, the angle that I haven't shown you yet is what you look like from the front. Okay, so head on, uh, head on shot underneath the water to see what the catch is looking like now in comparison. So we'll just do a quick stroke rate in this position. That's 60, 61 strokes per minute. That's double. 55. So it's going to be somewhere in that region, 55 to 60. Yeah, so you're quite right. It's doubled. Okay. Now, on the flip side of it, you are going to be taking more strokes per length in this video clip than the previous one. But yeah. the question is, does it matter if you're swimming 16 seconds per 50? Anymore. Exactly. <laughs> that's yeah. that's a good. That's, that's music to my ears. <laughs> Body position, of course, is much better. But let's look at it from the front and let's just assess 
what the catch is looking like and where we can still make some improvements. So you've got a nice position here, look, when you're pulling through. That hand is hand underneath it. Yeah, hand is open. Yeah, so potentially got a little bit of slippage there. Now this right arm, look, likes to pull through still very straight. It does, isn't it? It's not as wide as it used to be, okay, but it likes to pull through very straight. Why do you think it would like to pull straight? I guess it's the breathing, isn't it? That's Some all it is. Yeah. The trick or the uh, or the clue in that uh, statement was actually in the previous stroke. Yeah. The previous stroke when you weren't breathing to your left hand side. Yep. Watch this now. So we know that this left arm is pretty good, albeit fingers maybe just a smidgen too far open. Mm. But on this stroke here, when you're not breathing, look at that. Much, much, much better. So what we need to do today is we need to recognize that <laughs> As I, I've said, I say this to countless people. In fact, I was down in Bunbury this weekend running an entire coaching clinic down there. Mm. And the thing that we focused on, I only had a couple of hours with these guys. And I said, look, without seeing you swimming, we haven't got time to do video analysis for each of you. Mm. All I'm going to do here is I'm going to film you. Uh, sorry, <laughs> all I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a sweeping statement <laughs> that if something's going to go wrong in your stroke, it'll go wrong when you're taking a breath. Yep. So here, you've got great catch. But when you go to take a breath in, yes. it's very straight. Yes. So we're gonna simplify our time now in the water and just do a couple of drills to address that particular stroke. The absolute best drill you can do, and this again has all been refilmed since since we did our original session, is what we call the punko drill. Now the punko drill here is single arm drill, and it's put in this scenario it's perfect. <laughs> it's difficult, yeah. It's a very, very rhythmical stroke. The reason it the reason it called on co is it's almost tongue in cheek. Yep. Is that when you try it for the first time, you're gonna feel very, very uh, un unrhythmical, you'll feel awful, very yeah. uncoordinated. Okay. But what it's trying to achieve here, like Scott, is that when we look at it from the slightly different angle here. What you're not doing in your stroke is you're not getting that bend at the elbow. Oh. This paddle that we use today will allow you to try and get that right. Yep. Okay, to try and make sure it's actually fluid. But interesting enough, and this is a little bit more of a discussion or consideration for you going forwards, yep. is if you can see from this video clip that, hey, look, the only time that happens is when I'm breathing to my left-hand side, mm. eventually you end up rectifying it there, what would happen if you just did a little bit of breathing only to your right hand side. Yeah, well do you remember before, I couldn't even breathe No, myself, that's so exactly I'm, right. I've taught myself to do that as well. Exactly, <laughs> if you think about it, doubling yeah. your stroke rate is going to increase, well, it's going to double the uh, frequency of you getting a breath into that side, so yeah. it's going to allow that potential. But even, even, even aside from the discussion of whether or not you should be breathing bilaterally or just to one side, doing a little bit of training, just breathing to your right, might be quite eye-opening as well in terms okay. of actually measuring what speeds you do, etc. Yeah. Okay. okay. So what we're gonna do then, I'm just gonna stop this recording and then we're gonna jump down into the water and start to work on this. So great improvements, mate. It's great to see this. I've really Thanks. been really excited Thanks about doing this session yeah. and um, Yeah, me too. You know, and uh, you like I say we've we have used that your video clip mm. um, over the years to sort of help other overgliders out there try to improve That's their good. swimming okay. and uh, you know, so it's a it's a win win for everybody basically, yeah. So we had the little tempo trainer on at the end, and I sent you back to the future, as it were, or back to the past, really. Uh, if we have a little look here, so this is you at fifty seven strokes per minute, and it looks nice and rhythmical. We're not catching up at the top of the stroke there. Let's just get rid of that. Sixty at time. Yeah, did you think? Yeah, did you feel the yeah, sixty? Yeah, yeah, fifty seven yeah. to sixty. Yeah, there's no delay. But as soon as we got you to the halfway, what we did was we actually sent you back to the future, as it were, and I got you to go to thirty-three strokes per minute. Let's just find that little bit of footage here. Yeah, here we go. Look, so we're actually stalling out in front of their head. So this is you five so years hard. ago, basically. And yeah, like you say, it's so hard. So what you're doing, look, with that extra bit of time. You're actually spending all that extra time, like you were doing five years ago, right here. Yeah. Look at how we over rotate again. Because yeah. the time exactly right. Look at how the legs suddenly physically kick apart, yeah. and the yeah. two hands immediately go back to actually catching each other up again. It and felt so wrong. It felt so wrong, yeah. Now the interesting thing is when you <laughs> stop it here, <laughs> you actually shout. Impossible. Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> That is what you were doing five years ago. That is what your stroke rate was. Is that right? It feels different, isn't it? That's actually hard. I'm trying to spin that stuff. 
It's harder, exactly right. It's harder and it's 16 seconds of length. So 32 seconds, 100 slower. Quite a big, uh, obviously yeah. quite a big difference there. Yeah. Just to explain that though, very briefly, the reason it actually felt harder with the slower stroke rate, so if we just come to our little graphs and charts thing here, again, this is all since that first session. There was a yeah. study actually done in the US to actually measure differences in stroke rate, etc. And this little chart here, look, shows that when people artificially slow their stroke rate mm. down by 10 or 20%, their heart rate actually increases. Yeah. And the oxygen consumption increases, and the reason, breath. yeah, exactly. Well, holding the breath, but yeah. more importantly, what they actually looked at was the kicking rate. So when you slow it down too much, you stall, and we end up getting this sort of overglider kickstart that we call it, and this big, boom, powerful kick to push yourself through that. Use a huge amount of oxygen energy. Yeah. Exactly right. So, so that's why you can be swimming 16 seconds per 50 meters quicker now. Okay, <laughs> and a stroke rate twice as high, maybe taking a couple of extra strokes per length, but definitely swimming significantly mm. more efficiently. So uh, I'll just stop that recording for you now, and then Scott, this will be burned up in two minutes' time, and uh, you'll be able to take all that information away there for you. It's cool. Awesome. You did great there, mate. Really, Thank you really much. good. And it's, uh, it's a pleasure to, to take you back through it. And I, like I said, I've been really excited about doing this session for the last couple of weeks. <laughs> there we go.